What's going on guys? Welcome to TK's Garage 405. Uh, on today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to fix the dinging on the screen on these Silverado trucks. Uh, I don't know how long it's been happening for. I know my 2012, I believe, did it. My 15 never did it, but it was fairly new. Um, this 15 that I'm driving now does it. A 16 that I had did it. So a very very common issue i never really knew what the problem was before but uh, through a bunch of research here um i'm told that it pretty much boils down to the factory switches were just junk so i've tried everything other than that before on other vehicles and this vehicle included like cleaning out the contacts and making sure the trailer was fine and this and that and i always thought it was the trailer but so like i said after i did a little research here they said that the problem is actually the the trailer switch so i went on amazon i ordered a switch for it it was very expensive at the auto parts store so this one had really good ratings everybody said it fixed the problem so we'll see um yeah i guess i'm not sure if 100 it will fix the problem but supposedly this is 99 percent of what the issue is with them so i'll show you guys what we do for that and uh, i've never done one of these before so it'll be a learning experience here I'm going to show you guys what I bought here. This is just the Amazon switch that I got. There's the part number if you guys want to get the same one or whatever. But it's just a generic switch here. So you can see, it just clips into the back. It's your generic trailer switch there. I'll take it out of the package and show you afterwards there. But pretty straightforward. And then the buttons aren't connected. So that's something important to notice. And pay attention when you take it apart because these two buttons one is stationary and one is the slider for the trailer brake adjustment. So that's important to note that. Make sure when you're taking it apart that you're not putting them in the wrong place or whatever. Um, and then I'll show you, just because I didn't want to be a hack here, I decided I was going to buy a trim removal tool. I'm sure I will find a use for it in the future. It's probably lots of times I should have had it already. I hate doing this type of stuff for the record, but that was like, $18 on Amazon for this kit. I thought I'd just break down and buy it and then I have it forever. So it's uh, I thought it was actually steel, but I suppose that doesn't make sense if it was. It's all plastic made out of maybe fiberglass or something like that. So anyways, yeah, um, I guess I'm going to get at it here and we'll see what we can figure. All right, guys, so going to see what we can do here. I don't know how to take any of this stuff apart. I believe the side panel comes off for the fuses and then take the buttons off for the switches and all that, and then we'll go from there. So. Okay, so this kind of shows you guys what type of clips are in here. And if you didn't know, which I actually, to be honest, I forget this all the time. There's spare fuses back here. This is your main fuses for like the interior and things like that. And then there's another one under the hood, but this is the type of clips. And you start ramming them with it on a, with a flat screwdriver, you can do it, but you're gonna end up beating up your panels and you might break clips and things like that. So that's why I bought this, this setup here. There's a whole bunch of different tools for it. I'm probably using the wrong ones, but I'm gonna try not to ruin anything. This truck with all the miles it has is actually still in very good condition here yet so give her a whirl here um so next one's here try to get these off so. need something a little more stiff for that Remember, I'm pretty sure this is the original switch in here because I've never changed it. Until recently, I wouldn't even known that you 
should change it or could change it, I suppose. I, and I suppose I knew you could, but I didn't realize that that would be the issue. So maybe it won't be the issue. Oh, there we go. So just kind of shows you guys. These just pop into place there. Just a little thing there. Keep moving along here. I should have a tray for this. That was bad on my part. I'm not losing parts. Another clip out there. And then. Piece in there and get underneath there with it without scratching it up. Maybe the best piece now. There we go. Okay. There. Yeah, see that worked way better than a screwdriver. Not gonna lie. So now these plugs, there's not a lot of room to work here. There is plugs for my four-wheel drive because this truck has four-wheel drive and then the headlight switch, a dimmer switch, all that kind of stuff. So you just have to squeeze it, and I believe it should just pop out of here, one at a time. Okay, there's the bottom one. Uh, just for my record, they're usually they're usually specified to a, a size of a clip, but just in case they're the same, because I've seen that before. I want to make sure that they go back to the right place, so I'm just going to take a picture with my other phone there. All right, take the middle one out, which is gray here. That would be my four-wheel drive switch. Pull that one out, and then pull the top one out here. Same thing, you just push down those snap clips and pull it out. So that kind of shows you guys what's going on behind there. To be honest, I thought this would take a lot longer to get this apart, so. So this one is made in China as well, so it looks like it's probably made in China, just like the original one, the new one. So whatever, man whatever works so now there's a whole bunch of these tools that you can use to get these Let's see here we can find a smaller tool to get some of these clips out of here I don't want to break the switch here so I'm just trying to pull the top one out too so I believe it pulls out from the back side here well, let's try the one I have here actually so I don't know if you guys can see this at all but there's just like little snap clips here Okay. Kind of sucks because there's clips on both sides, so you get it moving. It's not moving on both sides anyway, so this would be one of those times I might have to fast forward because it's going to take me. Oh, there you go. Hey, I was smarter myself again. So that's interesting. The back piece pulled off of this. Okay. Well, uh,. I don't think that was supposed to happen. <laughs> Maybe it was, I don't think so though. So that's in two pieces now. So, set that down there. Uh, hopefully that was the right switch. <laughs> okay, just for the record, I made a mistake there. I did not realize there was a second set of clips. If you look, this is the clip that holds the back on and then this is, there's two little clips here. I obviously pulled off the wrong clip. So that's something that you guys can pay attention to when you're pulling yours out. Not that it matters, you're changing the switch anyways, but just in case, maybe you got a bad switch or something, you wanted to put your old one back in for a little bit. This one's been dinging at me for like, like something crazy here. Like I think I drove 2000 miles it and it was dinging like every 15 seconds or actually at the end there, it was dinging just nonstop pretty well for the last thousand miles. So let me just grab the switch here. Sorry guys, I'll grab the switch and I'll show you. That's crazy how fast that came apart. I'm glad I bought that trim tool kit because that would have been a lot more messing around. That actually worked pretty killer. If I'm being honest here, I always thought that it was kind of a waste of money, but just realizing that it's not. So here's the old one and there's the new one. So other than the sheen of it maybe or something like that, it's really pretty much the same. And you can see on mine, which I didn't even realize until right this second here, if you look closely at it, see how it's like sticking in so obviously those buttons are hanging up i don't know if that's don't really know why that's happening but 
anyways, so obviously that was a, a problem here. So I'll put this in there and then we'll see if it, uh, see if it fixes the problem here. So just kind of the reverse order here again, you can see I accidentally split the, the one I just pulled out of there, but make sure it's the right way here. It's pretty dirty back there. Just gonna give it a quick wipe here. Um, I actually have some wipes on the other side of my truck. I'm gonna grab one of those, give it a quick wipe down. As you can see, I've still got antifreeze in my truck over on this side from the last debacle. So, that's all right though. It's been like the last two weeks of, of painful problems here. Maybe the last month, I would say. Our water heater went out and my truck had multiple problems here that were just really not really even an issue. It was just something dumb that just sort of happened with the overheating there and things like that. And then, and then uh, what happened yeah, on the weekend here? Or were we still using our camper? uh we're still kind of pretty much using it for like cooking and washing dishes and whatnot because we still don't have a kitchen here and uh yeah we've been we've been using that and all of a sudden uh my son came out and said hey the the lights are flickering when i turn the water pump on i was like uh oh i went out and checked and it turned out that there's a gfi breaker there and it's, it's tripped a few times on us there and i didn't really clue in and usually when that starts happening just from past experience, it ends up kind of being, kind of being like where it's at the point where that breaker is going to quit and just by fluke there, I found one at Lowe's. So I went and picked it up and changed it. And that's really what it was. So it's uh, pretty, pretty easy. It was just a Siemens one or whatever. Um, yeah, they, it, and it's weird because it ran the, fr so it, it controls the um, inverter which in turn controls the fridge and all that stuff. So the fridge was running on gas, but then if the power dies on the battery, which cause the, it wasn't charging the battery, it ends up causing problems with that. So it's just, yeah, not, not good. But anyways, it was, it was just the breaker there. So I went and grabbed one by a fluke. They had one at Lowe's and I switched it and all was good again. So, but if I hadn't been home, it might've been a bit of an ordeal for, my family to figure that out so i'm glad i was home when that happened usually i'm not home when things like that happen but yeah it's been quite the ordeal of problems here lately so okay put this back in here let's see you just push it in and it should just snap in okay pretty straightforward let's get the buttons for when i i guess i can put them on now I guess it doesn't really matter. It looks like I thought the maybe these buttons, how they went in were different, but it looks like they're pretty much identical. So just pushes back into here. Make sure I don't break anything here. Just push that in until it's tight there. And then if you take a look closely, you can see the other hole there push that one in and then that's it and then that should go like that so it actually looks pretty much perfect there so we're kind of in the little bit of a shade here but okay put all these plugs back in now connect everything back up it's kind of tight spaces here but i guess it's good because it's not it's not a bunch of wires dangling all over the place that way hey that one snapped in good do the middle gray one here also good and then this one yeah, I'm gonna actually just take that and quickly wipe this a little bit. It's pretty dirty and behind here. Just try to get a little bit of that dust out of here while I've got it open. Give it a quick wipe anyways. I'm gonna attempt it. We can attempt it actually. I'm not letting too much more. It's crazy if you look inside the vent, <laughs> vent ducting and everything, how dirty it gets in there just from probably not changing the cabin air filter or who knows, whatever, but. 
another thing that this thing is right beside my door and my door has like the tiniest little tear in it and it took me a long time to realize because you could barely even see it this door seal has a tiny little tear in it and after it rains hard there's water on my floor here and then it took me forever to realize it's running down the seal and then onto the floor so i don't know if some of that moisture had gotten there but apparently this was like a problem right from the factory with gm here so like i said i'm not 100% guaranteeing it's gonna fix the problem, but that's pretty much what the bulk of people say. So we'll snap it back in here, start it up and see if it actually takes care of the problem or not, I guess. I think it felt like the bottom was kind of in first there. I guess that's it. That feels like it just barely even snapped in there, so. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, this, like I said, it shows you all your fuse locations here or whatever. You could get this off without a trim removal tool, but again, you don't want to break things, but it is just something to remember that you have spare fuses there, because like I said, I mean, I never just, I never think about that when I've had issues, so good to know. All right, make sure to slide back in there and then these panels snap together. And then that is it. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll fire up and maybe take it around the block here and see if this fixed the problem. All right guys, so just taking the truck for a little ride here. Making sure everything's good after I changed the switch there. So it seems like it might have resolved my problem here. So I think this is a very, very common issue for a lot of people. Um, covers a lot of vehicles, you know, all the way from trailblazers to 2500s to half tons to, you know, everything pretty much. I think all these switches are pretty well the same here. Um, yeah, I've got some other other service lights to deal with now but i think that was the that was the resolve here for my trailer dinging problem here so um i've heard people say that you should reset the you should reset the um the sensor i suppose or whatever or the switch or whatever whatever is connected to it i've heard that you should disconnect the battery leave it off for a minute reconnect it and then sometimes that's your problem too so there's a bunch of other things that could be the issue a lot of other common issues that go with this is like the trailer plug so if you have a fifth wheel trailer plug or if you have a you know plug to your main trailer uh, a lot of times just the wiring to that goes bad just takes a little bit of a whatever short in it or something like that so could possibly be that i've had that problem in the past if you do have that problem you just basically take it into a trailer shop or do it yourself or whatever and they'll just replace those two stretches of wire for you there basically a new plug plug it into the depending on the type of vehicle you have or whatever i think my truck has like a junction box so basically unplug it could put a new one in plug it in basically so um i don't know how easy it would be to get at the fifth wheel one of mine because of my camper on the back there so but yeah i think for the most part this is gonna fix most people's problem with this so a lot of people have lower mileage vehicles and it does this right from the get-go and apparently the gm switches were just bad so you can see it was made in china so maybe maybe it wasn't that great to begin with i don't know if this one's ever been changed i'm 99 percent sure it hasn't but anyways so Make sure you guys follow me on social media, like, subscribe, share, uh, follow me on Facebook and TK's Garage 405 on Facebook and Instagram as well as YouTube here. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys in the next one.